cannot believe you guys talked me into doing another one of these videos. Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to a new bookshelf tour. These videos, oh my god. Yeah, so you guys have been requesting this and I've been putting it off just because I knew how long this was gonna take. Here we go. Updated bookshelf tour. It's been over a year. A lot of things have changed. It's about time. If you missed it recently, I got a new bookshelf and I have some vlogs of me putting it together and reorganizing stuff. So I'll link those down below if you want to see that process. But if you're only interested in the final products, it's totally cool too. You've come to the right video. If you've never seen one of my bookshelf tours before, I don't do them the way that most people do them. The idea is still the same. I'll still go through and show you everything that I have on my shelves and how I organize them, things like that. But I just do them a little bit differently. You'll see what I mean in a second. I'll have the playlist of my old bookshelf tours linked down below also if you want to see the way that the shelves used to look because they've changed a ton. I've completely changed the way they organize them. I've unhauled a ton of books since then. I've also acquired a ton of books since then. So they just look very different. So I have the four behind me, which I kind of consider my main shelves. I have the new one, which I will also show you. And then I have a smaller one over there. So we'll just be making our way around the room today. I am gonna try and not make this super long because nobody has time to sit here and watch an hour long video. But with that said, I hope you guys enjoy this bookshelf tour. Let's just get started. So I think I'll do an overview and just show you how each of them is organized first and then we'll get into the actual books on the shelf. So let me show you what each of the bookshelves looks like right now. So here's bookshelf number one. So these first four rows or so are all hardcover young adult books and they are organized by author's last name. And then once I got to the bottom of that on this fifth row, this cube is for poetry, this cube is for nonfiction. And then starting from here we have paperbacks, adult, and middle grade, and those are also in order of author's last name. And then these two cubes at the bottom are tall hardcover TBR books. Everything else on the shelf is red. This is my new bookshelf. These are also all red books. The top are kind of like favorite paperbacks or just paperbacks that I thought looked nice on here. The middle three shelves are all pretty much hardcover and these are favorite books and series and just things again that I thought looked nice together. And then this bottom shelf is Harry Potter and then I actually have two stacks of books here. You can see I pushed those back because I was moving them back and forth. And these two stacks. <laughs> are tbr books let me turn on my light i the lighting in this video i'm warning you now is not gonna be great i'm sorry and then my final shelf is this little one that also kind of acts as a bedside table for me so i have this bin which i just like put wires and stuff in there it's really helpful for organization and then these bottom two shelves are more tbr books and then if you were around for the last couple of videos you know i used to have those huge piles here I've gotten rid of almost all of the books. These are just my leftover books, which are for sale at my Depop shop, but I'm considering just donating them somewhere soon. And then I used to have a huge row of books up here, and now it's just my journals and my DVDs. So all my books fit on shelves now, and I'm really happy about that. So I think we'll actually start with the new bookshelf, and then we'll go through the four main ones, and then we'll go through the little one over there. You know, I've been trying to cut back on my energy drinks, but I'm gonna need it for this video so good. So we'll start with our paperback shelf. First I have some Colleen Hoover books here. Verity, Maybe Someday, November 9, Slammed, Ugly Love, and It Ends With Us. If you're gonna read any Colleen Hoover book I would recommend Verity or It Ends With Us. I think those are her two best ones and the rest of these just know that there's problematic stuff in here. Like still read them if you want them. I still enjoy them at the time but people aren't happy with these books. It also really annoys me that they're not all the same height. Then at the top here, I have How to Fall in Love with Anyone. I actually met the author and stuff. She went to the same college as me and came to speak for us. And this was really good. It's like a collection of essays about how all of the different generations in her life fell in love, like her grandparents, her parents, her. It's really interesting. Then I have Neverwhere and American Gods by Neil Gaiman. These are definitely my two favorite of his. The Kite Runner, also great. The Help, You by Caroline Kefnes. If you've only watched the show, please read the book. It's one of my favorites. The Passage by Justin Cronin is one of my all-time favorite adult, like horror novels. I guess it's considered horror is about vampires and it's fantastic. And then Water for Elephants. We're only on the first shelf and the hair is already going up. And I have The Diviners by Libba Bray, which I actually enjoyed a lot more than I was expecting to. Perfect for around Halloween. Nevernight by Jay Kristoff, also fantastic fantasy. Then I have a bunch of my like personal development self-help books. I have Hashtag Girlboss, You're a Badass, You Are Badass at Making Money, and Big Magic. I have a whole video about all of my favorite self-help books, so I can link that down below if you want some recommendations. The Unhoney Mooners by Christina Lauren. Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson, which I was actually really disappointed with. 
was not a fan. And Easy by Tamara Weber, which is honestly one of the best new adult romances I've read. Now moving down to the second shelf. These are all hardcover and these are short books and the third shelf is tall books. And you can see they're all kind of like a bluish purple color scheme for the most part. The majority of them are favorites of mine and then some of them just fit the color scheme so they went in here. So we have Passenger by Alexander Bracken, which is the case of, it's just has a really pretty cover and the color scheme worked. The book itself was okay, but it's not one of my favorites. The Devouring Grey, which I just read this year and I actually really enjoyed. The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer, you guys know this is one of my favorite series. And this series has just fantastic covers. And we have the Immortal Rules trilogy. This is one of my favorite paranormal romance trilogies. It's about vampires. Don't let the cover of the first book fool you. These are some of my favorites. Highly recommend. The Truth About Alice by Jennifer Matthew. This is a YA contemporary and this will forever be such a nostalgic book for me because this is the first book that I ever reviewed on this channel like three or four years ago. Daughter of Deep Silence. The Under the Never Sky trilogy by Veronica Rossi. So freaking underrated and no one talks about them on booktube anymore. They were kind of popular when they first came out in like 2014 but highly, highly recommend. And then the archived duology by Victoria Schwab. It was supposed to be a longer series. I'm so bummed that it didn't turn out that way. Everyone loves her new series, but don't forget about these books. I honestly think these are some of her best work. I love these books. Now moving down to shelf three, the tall books. Semiosis by Sue Burke. You guys. You have to read this book. You have to read this book. It's an adult science fiction. This is one of my favorite books that I read last year. It's so freaking good. Go look into it. Heartless by Marissa Meyer. I know this is a hit or miss with people, but it's one of my favorite books. And I have the Caraval trilogy by Stephanie Garber. I really, really enjoyed these. These were really fun. I don't think they're gonna be one of my all-time favorite series, but I still would totally recommend them. And I have The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. I actually haven't read this yet. It's on my TBR for September, but haven't gotten to it yet. The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black is one of my favorite books of hers. There's kind of a trend here. I obviously really like vampire books. And then The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King by Holly Black. The third book in this series is coming out in November and it's one of my most anticipated books of this year. I'm so excited for it. And then of course I have The Infernal Devices by Cassandra Clare. Will Herondale will forever be one of my all-time favorite characters. And Clockwork Princess, I don't think I've ever cried as much as I cried in this book. And then the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Maas. I didn't love the first and the third, but I'm definitely on the bandwagon. I loved the second. And overall, I love this series because I love the character Reese. And I think that was a really well done, like enemies to lovers situation. It's not always done well. I think she did it really well. Okay, so now coming down to our second to last shelf, we have Night Film by Marcia Pestle, which is one of my all-time favorite adult psychological thrillers. The Winners Trilogy by Marie Rukowski. I didn't realize until this year that people hated this series, but honestly, I think the hate for this series has been blown out of proportion. Like one person said they were offended by it and they hated it and that just like spread like wildfire and now everyone's offended by it even though they haven't read the books. I liked them. I thought they were well done. Then I have the Bloodlines series by Rochelle Mead. This is the spinoff series series for Vampire Academy and I actually like the spin-off series even more than I like Vampire Academy so definitely read these. And then the Vampire Academy series by Rochelle Mead. I'm actually thinking about rereading them this year because it's been a really long time and I love this series. And then I have The Glittering Court by Rochelle Mead. This is almost like entirely a Rochelle Mead shelf, not on purpose. This one I think you can skip. I didn't like it as much as her other two series. Now coming down to our final shelf. This is why I don't like bookshelf tours. Getting the camera at the right angle is the hardest part, but I have the illustrated editions of Harry Potter and then I have my hardcover Harry Potter and I have the Slytherin special edition of the first book which I got at Harry Potter World in London. And then we have two gigantic stacks of TBR books. If you see one of your favorite books on here or just a book that you really love, feel free to tell me to make it a priority because I'm pretty bad at deciding what book to read next and that would be helpful. So Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, Tart of Darkness by Denise Swanson, Here We Are Now by Jasmine Morga, No One Cares About Crazy People by Ron Powers, What Is the What by Dave Edgars, Ferris by Marissa Meyer, Not Even Bones by Rebecca Schaefer, Once You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson, Like a Love Story by Abdeed Naisman, Fire by Kristen Kishore, Dare Mighty Things by Heather Kavinsky, A Million Worlds with You by Claudia Gray, Paranormalcy by Kirsten White, Vixen by Jillian Larkin, Before She Ignites by Jody Meadows, As You Wish by Chelsea Sidow, the Ghost of Heaven by Marcus Sedwick, Haven by Marie Lindsay, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik, A Beast and Beauty by Stacey J, Trial by Fire by Josephine Angelini, and Replica by Lauren Oliver. Okay, now we can move on to the big shelf. So welcome to my main shelf. This is what's in the background of the majority of my videos. And like I said, they are in order 
of authors last name for the most part and I've read all of them until we get down to the bottom. So first we have The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I think I read this last summer and I really really like this one especially if you like poetry. The Upside of Unrequited, Winter Girls, Undead Girl Gang which I found pretty disappointing. Modern Romance by Aziz Ansari. This is a non-fiction book written by a comedian and it's actually really funny and really insightful on modern dating. The Shadow and Bone Trilogy by Lee Bardugo which was okay but I wasn't a huge fan of. And then The Curse Workers Trilogy by Holly Black. The first one is White Cat. I think these are my least favorite Holly Black books that I've read. Then we have King of Scars by Lee Bardugo which again I was just kind of disappointed with. And The Six of Crows duology which again it was like okay. I liked Six of Crows but I'm just not as in love with her books as everyone else seems to be but I am really excited about Ninth House. I am really looking forward to that one. Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake and Anna Dressed in Blood. Taken by Aaron Bauman which was a really lackluster book but it has a really nice cover. Then I have the second two books in the Darkest Minds trilogy. I lent my friend the first one when the movie was coming out and I had lent it out to her before my last bookshelf tour over a year ago and I still haven't gotten it back. There's a couple of books <laughs> that I'm missing. And I've got two editions of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And moving over here, Graceling by Kristen Kishore, The Selection Trilogy by Kira Cass, Marked by PC and Kristen Cass. I absolutely hate this book and everyone's like, if you hated it so much, why don't you get rid of it? I hated this book so much more than I think I've ever hated any book. I like to hold on to it, okay? I like to hold on to any book that I had like a strong emotional reaction to. Then we have have the Mortal Instruments by Cassandra Clare. I'm sure you all know what they look like. And then I have Lady Midnight and I'm missing Lord of Shadows because that same friend has not returned that. Unfiltered by Lily Collins. The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Nightshade by Andrea Kramer. I never hear anyone talk about this book but I read this in high school and I loved it. It's a good paranormal werewolf romance. How She Lived, How I Died by Mary Crockett. This was actually one of my professors in college and I really liked the book. And then The Ring of the Crown by Melissa De La Cruz. I feel like I complain about this book in every bookshelf tour. I loved this book. It was a supposed to be a series. We didn't get the sequel and now I'm forever left with the cliffhanger. And then Wither by Lauren Destefano, which I also hate with every fiber of my soul. Moving down to the second row, Fever, which is the sequel to Wither, A Tale of Two Cities, My Life Next Door, The Hush Hush Saga, first by Laurie Elizabeth Flynn, the first three Beautiful Creatures books. I actually used to have the fourth one and I read half of it and then I gave up on the series and I unhauled it because I was so annoyed. <laughs> Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Laura Godleb. This is one of my favorite books that I've read so far this year. Highly recommend. What You Make Me Feel by Maureen Goo is one of my favorite YA contemporaries. I have the first two books in the Firebirds trilogy, which is such an underrated series, but it's really, really good. Some more books that I'm just kind of indifferent about. And then we have the Unearthly trilogy by Cynthia Hand. This is another great paranormal romance series. Rebel Bell by Rachel Hawkins. I unhauled the second two books in the series because I hated them so much, but I loved the first one. So we held on to this one. The Hexhall trilogy which was just kind of okay for me. Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. This is another book that I really really loved and I just recently found out that people like hate this book and think it's racist and people are offended by it and I don't agree. I don't think this book was problematic. I really enjoyed it. I think it's worth reading. And We Stay by Jenny Hubbard. Another super underrated book. Really really dark but really really good. Highly recommend. The Fallen series by Lauren Kate. Illuminae. I haven't read the rest of the series. Honestly I don't know if I will. I've kind of lost interest in them. I have two Sophie Kinsella books. Can You Keep a Secret and Finding Audrey. I liked Can You Keep a Secret more. The His Fair Assassins trilogy by Robin Lefevers. I love these books. They're about assassin nuns. They're some of the best historical fantasy books that I've ever read. And now she's continuing the series. The first one, the first new one just came out. So I really want to read that soon. I'm really excited for it. And I have the first three books in the Throne of Glass series. Then moving down to the third row, I have the rest of the Throne of Glass series and Catwoman by Sarah J Maas. The Shatter Me trilogy and then I have the first of the continuation of the books Restore Me. I don't know if I'm gonna read the rest of the books. Again this is a series that I've just kind of lost interest in even though I loved the original trilogy when I first read it. Save the Date by Morgan Matson, which I really didn't like. Unhooked by Lisa Maxwell which I also really didn't like. I guess we're just in the row of I hate these books right now. The Thousandth Floor series by Catherine McGee. I really liked the first two and I strongly disliked the last one. Moving over. I don't know how to get myself this low. Okay we have The Female of the Species which is one of my all-time favorite books. This is the book that I recommend to people all the freaking time. And Not a Drop to Drink by Mindy McGuinness. Also really good. I really want to read more of her books. The Wake series by Lisa McMahon. I read these, gosh, like I don't even know how long ago when I was first getting into reading. I think I was like maybe 15. Really weird books. Really weird books. Really dark too. One of Us is Lying. Really didn't like this book. Let the Sky Fall by Shannon Messenger. I actually really did like this one. It's the first book in a series that I never continued on with but would recommend. Then I have my Twilight books in The Host by Stephanie Meyer and then the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. I'm sitting down but 
it's fine. Parallel by Lauren Miller. Underrated. Again, I read this like way before I started booktube. Would recommend. Kill a Boy Band by Golden Mulvatsky. Freaking hilarious book. This is where it ends. It's about a school shooting and it's really sad. Unraveling, I would skip it. Queen of Hearts, I would skip it. And then I have the Delirium series by Lauren Oliver, which I loved at the time, but honestly now I would skip it. So on this shelf, I have the rest of my Lauren Oliver books. I have Before I Fall, Vanishing Girls, and Panic. I read Before I Fall in the Delirium series when I was in like middle school or high school and I loved them. And I really liked the way that Lauren Oliver writes, but I have yet to enjoy one of her books since then as much as I liked those first books when I was younger. So that's disappointing. Anna and the French Kids books by Stephanie Perkins. Neverworld Wake by Marcia Pestle, which was okay, but given how much I loved Night Film, was disappointing. I Miss You When I Blink. It's one of my favorite books that I've read this year. You have to read it. It's so good. Another Little Piece is one of my favorite YA horror novels. Totally would recommend. And Snow Like Ashes was kind of forgettable for me. I'm sweating. Okay. Across the Universe. I used to have the whole series. Got rid of the other ones. The Jacoby series by William Ritter. I talked about the series so freaking much last summer. Read it read it. Then we have the Divergent series which has been completely ruined for me. I hated Allegiant so much that the series as a whole has just been ruined for me, but this song will save your life was really good. So now I have some more Victoria Schwab books. City of Ghosts which is the first book in her middle grade series which is pretty good. And I have A Darker Shade of Magic. I read this first book so long ago and never continued on with the series. I think I want to but I'm gonna have to reread this first. And then Vicious and this Savage song. I really like this one. Vicious wasn't my favorite. Windfall, Forgettable, Shiver series by Maggie Steve Otter. Really liked The Raven Cycle by Maggie Steve Otter is one of my all-time favorite young adult series. So unique and so good. And then the last cube on this row, we have Forbidden, which I loved when I read it a long time ago. It made me ugly cry. The first two books in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series, the reboot duology by Amy Tintera. Highly recommend. Not enough people have read these books so good. The Devil and the Deep Blue Sea duology. I really liked the first one. The second one I think you can pass on, but this is a great Halloween like atmospheric book. And then The Merciless by Daniel Vega. I have a whole book review on this. I didn't like it. Okay, so this is our last cube of hardcovers before we get into the like very particular genres. So I have the Pivot Point duology by Casey West. I know she's actually really well known for her contemporaries, but these were really good. My Heart and Other Black Holes by Jasmine Morga. This used to be like my all-time favorite contemporary. Highly Illogical Behavior, which was pretty good. Afterworlds by Scott Westerfield. The Fifth Wave, which was just not my jam at all. Then I have Girls with Sharp Sticks by Suzanne Young, which is one of my favorite books that I've read so far this year, which made me pick up her other book, The Program, which I also really liked. I know this is a whole long series, but I've only read the first one so far. And then Made You Up was pretty forgettable, but it was decent. This cube is my poetry shelf. I actually just posted a video on my channel talking about my entire poetry collection, talk about my favorite ones. So we're gonna skip this cube because I just made that video. So if you wanna hear about my poetry books, I'll link that down below. But this is all my poetry. This cube is sort of nonfiction, adult. Yeah, I think this is all nonfiction. So we have Humans of New York, which I love. I don't know if you follow Humans of New York on Instagram, highly recommend. Then I have my Navigating English Grammar textbook from my advanced grammar class in college. I don't keep most of my textbooks, but this one, seeing as I do editorial work, I figured would might come in handy, so I've held on to it. Then I have Starting and Running a Business for Dummies and the Emotion Thesaurus. This is one of my favorite writing resources. Highly recommend if you're a writer. Sacred Powers by David G. I could make a whole video talking about this book don't recommend. The One Minute Gratitude Journal. Little Princes by Connor Grennan. I would recommend this book all day long. It's about this guy who goes to volunteer at an orphanage in Nepal and it's so good. It's so good. Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass. This is also really good. Read This If. So this is a collection of essays and they're titled things like, read this if nobody texted you good morning. Read this if it feels like your depression is getting the best of you. Read this if you're 23 and lost. Read this if you've stopped believing in love. So it's like all of these scenarios and it points you to a page to read an essay about it. And honestly, I like the idea of this more than I liked the essays themselves. So I would love to find something like this that just has better essays because the essays were kind of underwhelming. A Rip in Heaven is a memoir I had to read for my criminal law class. It's so sad but it's so good. Then I have Starting From Scratch, A Different Kind of Writer's Manual, more writing books. The Spirit Catches You When You Fall Down, one of the best books I've read this year, or was that last year? Man, I don't even know. I guess it was last year, technically. It was this previous school year. Read it. On Writing by Stephen King. Grappy Little Nobody by Anna Kendrick. Bird by Bird. This is another must-read book on writing if you're a writer. And Skinny Bitch. Now we're moving into my paperbacks and then some hard, weird hardcovers. And these are, I think, 
in order of author's last name again. So we have the crossover. This is written in verse and it's about basketball and I had to read this for some class my freshman year of college and it was actually so much better than I was expecting. Zenith and the first four books in the Lux series. I used to have the fifth one, kind of similar to the Beautiful Creatures book. I started to read it, got annoyed, and unhauled it because I decided I didn't want to finish the series. The Handmaid's Tale, one of my all-time favorite books. Pride and Prejudice, El Defo. This is a graphic novel. Would highly, highly recommend. This is actually set in the small town that I went to college in, which is kind of cool. The Alchemist, Specimen Days, The Other Einstein, The Dark Beneath the Ice, and World War Z. Now we gotta get down to the last row. I don't know how to get you that low. Can you kind of see the books? I think you can. So I have Red Rising by Pierce Brown. Haven't read the rest of the series yet. The first book in the Morganville Vampire series, which was so bad. Why did nobody tell me these books were so bad? Dark Matter by Blake Crouch fantastic. One of the best books that I read last year or the year before that. Croak. I actually read this forever ago. This is the first book in a series. It was pretty good. I don't know why I didn't finish the series. And we have the Angel Fall books. I have an arc of the becoming of Noah Shaw, Brave New World, Shandell, The Giver, Warm Bodies, Life of Pi, A Monster Calls, Dorothy Must Die, and There's Someone Inside Your House. Okay, this is our last cue before we get to TBR books. So Tender is a collection of short stories. was really good. Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close is one of my all-time favorite books. Scythe, Poison Study, An Ember in the Ashes, Watchers is a really good sci-fi book, Hamlet, 1984, To Kill a Mockingbird, Children of the River, and then the T.T. Whale series. This is hurting my back. I'm such an old person. Oh my god. And now these are all TBR books that are tall hardcovers. So I'm actually just going to bring you up here and I will hold the books up. So as I said before with those TBR books, if you see something that I should read, let me know. Last Star Burning. All Our Yesterdays. I really want to get to this one soon. Falling Kingdoms. I've had forever. I don't know if I'm ever going to get to it. I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. These Broken Stars. House of Salt and Sorrows. I really want to get to this one soon also. Truth Witch. Wicked Fox. Slasher Girls and Monster Boys. I want to try in October this year. Becoming by Michelle Obama. I have started this. I just haven't finished it yet. It's a long long book and then flawed and then these two are on my tbr for september so i'm planning to read them soon sorcery of thorns and the chemist by stephanie meyer okay so that's everything on this main shelf all we have left is the little shelf by my bed which is all tbr books ah just give myself a paper cut things i do for you guys okay so bear with me on this angle and the lighting my tripod would not fit over here so you're just propped on my bed so i have what you left me which is an arc that came out June of 2018. How have I still not read this? Lament by Maggie Steve Otter. Just One Day by Gail Foreman. Hopeless by Colleen Hoover. The Opposite of Loneliness. The Solution to Social Anxiety. The Incredible Secrets of Hadley Hill. The Wrath and the Dawn. Black City. I started this one and I actually was really enjoying it. Something I learned too late was to not start any books right before I went back to school because any book that I was reading the end of August, early September, when I moved back into college, I never finished. Every single year, there was one book that I was currently reading during move-in that I never finished. And this was that book last year. <laughs> and I was really enjoying it. So I just need to start it over, try again. What's Left of Me, Control, The Star-Touched Queen. And I just got this one recently, The Arrangement. I'm really excited to read this one. And then our last cube, they're tucked in here pretty tightly. Some of these books I've had for so long, honestly. I just did a huge unhaul. I just got rid of so many books. And still, I'm looking at these TBR books that I've had on my shelf for like five or more years. And I just don't know if I'm ever gonna get to them and if it's even worth holding on to them. So we have The Bird and the Blade, Black hearts. I DNF'd this last summer. I got 150 pages in. Oh, that's a pretty bookmark inside of it though. It's like a wood bookmark. I don't know. I wasn't loving it. I might just DNF this one for good and get rid of it. Before I let go. Alive. For whatever reason, I was really excited about this one. I don't remember why. I don't even remember what it's about. But at one point, I was really excited about this book. They both die at the end. I've tried to read like four times and I keep having to set it down because I don't like it and I can't get into it. So maybe I should just get rid of this one too. The Song of the Current, More Happy Than Not, Death Sworn, When We Collided, Hidden Bodies, and last but not least, but maybe least, The Name of the Star by Maureen Johnson. After my experience with Truly Devious by her, I'm hesitant to pick up another one of her books because I didn't like that one at all. So let me know. Has anyone read this one? I haven't heard anyone talk about this one. Let me know. Okay, so that was my updated bookshelf tour for 2019. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it didn't end up being too long. Thank you guys so much for watching if you've made it this far in the video. I really appreciate you sticking around this long. Like I said, if you saw any TBR books on here that you really think I'd like or I should get to 
sooner rather than later, let me know. I would love to know. I'll try to remember to link all of the videos that I mentioned throughout down below in the description. If I forget to link them, feel free to leave it in a comment like, hey, you forgot to do this and I'll do it. But I'll make sure to also link the playlist with my previous bookshelf tours down there if you want to see one of the older ones because things have changed pretty drastically. Other than that, if you want to follow me on any of my social media, all of those links are down below in the description. I'd appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I would love it if you would subscribe. I put up at least two to three new videos every single week and I would love to have you stick around. Other than that, I'll just see you guys in my next video very, very soon. Bye. So hit me. So hit me. So hit me. First a confession. With you, I feel a connection. With